imagine your very best friend. Can you imagine who your very best friend is for a moment? Picture them before your eyes. They might be here this morning. Just shut your eyes as you do that. Now imagine them as a baby, as they would have been as a baby. Maybe you knew them when they were a baby. And now imagine them as an old, old person, old and full of years, how they will yet be as they're approaching the end of their life. Wonder how that feels to you. Now, do something a little bit more difficult. Would you like to now imagine, keeping your eyes shut, your worst enemy? A person you don't get on with. Whoever that might be. And now again, imagine them as a baby. As they would have been all those years ago. And now, imagine them as an old person, maybe in an old people's home, being looked after by people. Maybe unable to move or even speak anymore. Imagine that same person like that. Okay, open your eyes. What did you notice as we did that little exercise? Did you notice anything? Did you notice that as you imagine these people, as babies and as old, old people, that maybe you felt a bit more compassion for them? Did you notice that? Did you notice how your feelings changed as you imagined them as a baby, as in a helpless old man? The Bible tells us that um, we come into the world naked and we leave the world naked. There's a kind of beginning and an end that actually look rather similar to each other. We come into this world very helpless and we often end this world very helpless as well. And the Bible also tells us that God has put into each and every one of us a sense of eternity. We're able to imagine great spans, a great, great uh, sweep of years. We can think back to how it was when we were a baby and on to how it might be when we're old and full of years. We can imagine eternity like that. And we haven't got a, new, a very old historic church here at all. One day it will be old. But if you've worshipped God, as I'm sure many of you had, in ancient buildings, then it helps you to imagine your forefathers, all that went before you, and then you can begin to glimpse a future beyond yourself. Have a look at this photo. The year is about 1953. Does anybody recognize one of the people there? <laughs> I know one person knows who that little boy out the front is. Who is it? It's me. Yes. And there's my, uh, my family as it was at that point in my life. Uh, do you notice the sort of slightly um, <clears throat> pleased with himself little look that little blonde boy has there with his white shirt? Slightly holy position of the hands, slightly mystical look of the eyes. And just, do you notice how he, he, he's rather pleased to be rather nearer the front and more in the limelight than his older brother, who's been looked after by his dad with his arm on the shoulder there? Do you notice that little boy? His name's Martin. And, you know, I, I recognize that something of me was in that little boy then, all those 60 years ago. It helps me to look at that photograph. And it helps me to think on to how I'll be, actually, rather soon, when I'm very old and very full of years. We have these land... You put, put him away to bed. Put him to bed now. We have these landmarks in our lives. We have births 
and marriages and, and graduations and triumphs and sicknesses and holidays and so on and so forth. Do you know, have, have you seen this advertisement that we see on the telly rather often now um, of uh, somebody growing up and these key moments in their lives, one after another and one after another? Yeah, and, and then it says that comes the caption, if you bank with us, you will be happy forever like this. Do you know that advertisement? Playing on our imaginations, our ability to grasp the years and this sense of eternity that God has put in us. Baptism is a landmark in the life of a person. It's actually probably more important and significant than any other landmark in a person's life. This is a big deal, a baptism. And we're going to have a baptism, the baptism of Lauren, in a moment. Now, at the moment, she's a sweet, helpless, beautiful little baby. She can't wait. She's raring to get going. The, the, the athletic gene from her parents is in her, and she, she was trying to get forward to get it rolling earlier. We see nothing but... Um, peace and contentment in her, great tribute to her parents, showing us what a happy home little baby Long comes from. But we need to be, get real. Things will happen, stuff will happen to Lauren in her life. And as a result of the stuff that will happen to her, she will also do things in her life. And you will all know people who are old and full of years and are still full of love, who can look you in the eye, can still look you in the eye in the way a baby can look you in the eye. But isn't it true and isn't it so sad that some people, as they get towards the end of their lives, can no longer look you in the eye because life has damaged them so much They've been hurt so much and maybe caused so much hurt too and are carrying guilt with them that towards the end of their lives it's as though their heart has hardened over. God, who made us all, sees everything and he has only one heart's desire and that is that each and every one of us should be healed of any brokenness that's in us. He's committed to do this for all of us through the whole stretch of our years. So let's hear these words that have been appointed today from Dean. These words from Ezekiel chapter 36 and verses 22, 4 to 28. This speaks right into this. Thank you, um, Chris. Yes. Okay, so this is the book of Ezekiel, and it can be found on 868, if you're going to read it in the church Bibles. So Ezekiel, chapter 36, on page 868. And we're starting at verse 24. For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I, remo I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. You will live in the land I gave your forefathers. You will be my people and I will be your God. Amen. So here is God speaking of sprinkling with clean water 
an act of cleansing and purification. These words are like a prefiguration of baptism, of Christian baptism. And this is what we're going to do in a moment for Lauren. These words, written all these centuries ago, speak of the heart of a person, indeed the heart of a whole nation of people, being taken out, really, and then that heart of stone being replaced with a heart of flesh. It's like a, a heart transplant operation. So if you think of all the damage that can be done to a person through their life, all the harm that can come to them, and you imagine God taking out the effects of that damage on the person's heart and taking it out and then putting a new heart of flesh back in. That's what Ezekiel is talking about here. And that's got what God does in baptism. And the miracle of it is that it doesn't just work in the moment, but it works, we believe, by faith, through the whole of the person's life. So what is happening now is it's rather like a marriage in, in the sense you have your wedding and then the whole marriage rolls out for hopefully for many, many years. In the same way, the grace of God will come to Lauren now, but that grace will continue to flow over her life for the rest of her life. But, here's the really big but, because she's looking at me full of acceptance, full of love, and how I would love to have a grandchild. And... And, and like that. But actually, she doesn't really know what's going on now, does she? She doesn't understand. She's too young to know. So she depends on mother and father and on godparents. And indeed, this whole community of faith of Christ Church, he only lives about t 10 yards from this building, 20 maybe. She depends on all of us for the grace of God to continue to unfold over the years of her life. She cannot do it on her own. What does it look like when a person has a heart of flesh and not a heart of stone? It looks like Lauren. Can you imagine a person who has a heart of flesh, undamaged by this life, full only of love and compassion and grace. Can you imagine a fully grown adult like that? There is only one person who's ever walked this planet who was like that. And that is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Gospel tells us that even when the nails were being banged through his hands, he said, he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And I imagine, I like to imagine, he was even looking at those Roman soldiers as he prayed that. Forgiving them. And a little bit later, one of the Gospels tells us that when Jesus had died on that terrible cross, one of those Roman soldiers said, Truly, this is the Son of God. Because that soldier who'd seen many, many crucifixions, recognizing the way this one man died, that you cannot be... How can you die and be full of love and compassion for those doing this torture to you? But Jesus had that heart of flesh through the whole of his life. And you see, we're praying that this grace that God the Father gave his son Jesus in such abundance will be given to me, to you, to Lauren, to all of us. So that when people do terrible things to us and our children, we will still, by a miracle of God's grace, still be filled with compassion and love. That's the miracle that we're praying for. So I've said, it takes your help. So we're going to turn now to say certain words together. I invite you to join in with this. Parents, godparents, and all of you that want to join in, we're going to make these statements because what we're saying, we're saying on behalf of Lauren who cannot yet 
make it her own. She cannot say it herself. We pray that one day she will be able to say these things for herself. Can you see that? <laughs> Good. So in baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, I ask, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? Uh, it's going to have, have to be a little bit more um, bold than that. This is about as big a statement and promise as you could make in your life. Right? So, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? Yeah. It says God, parents, and parents, but let's, we can all say this together. Yeah? Do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? I renounce them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbor? Do you turn to Christ as Savior? Do you submit to Christ as Lord? Do you come to Christ the way, the truth, and the life? Brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess together the faith of the church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? Do you believe and trust in God, his, in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in his Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. <coughs> the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. Holy Church. Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So I'd like to invite all the children to come up the front now, if you'd like to see the baptism. The parents and godparents to come and stand in a line like this with uh, Dad next to me here. Um, all right. Just here like this. Uh, thank you, Malcolm. And uh, all the children, would you like to come and see the actual baptism? You can even come and sit on the chairs here up the front if you like. Would you like to do that? Do feel free. And parents, bring your little children up the front if you want to. Just wait for these to hear still. Wait for all the children to come that want to come. Yeah, that's good. Good, 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 good. Okay. Thank you very much. Lauren Ann, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Fight valiantly against the devil, the sin, and the world, and continue his faithful servant until the end of your life. I sign you with the sign of the cross, the sign of Christ crucified. Just stay where you are now. So, Father God, we pray for Lauren Ann. Pray for your blessing on her whole of her life. And we thank you that all the blessings that you've showered upon her thus far and look forward to all the rest that are yet to come. And in just a moment, we're going to sing 
dad has got one of his children. <laughs> uh, the song that the family have asked for for this occasion. <laughs> <laughs> 